So let's look at another way to define natural transformation as a sort of completion of the category uh, of categories and functors between categories. But let's start with a description of a very simple category named one. It's a category whose drawing is, is here. So when I write one and double underline, it's a drawing, the drawing that follows is, is happen inside of this category. So here you can see that it has only one object, this category one, and one morphism, which has to be the identity of this object by uh, virtue of the axioms of a category. And we can define the composition if we want, but uh, the, the action, uh, since there's only one morphism, uh, it will have to map uh, the only pair of morphism to the only morphism in uh, one star star. Okay, so that's a category one, the simplest category, or almost the simplest category. Uh, because a category with no object uh, would exist as well. And if we start from a, a general category C, we can see that a functor from 1 to C is actually determined by just an object of C. If we write what it means to be a functor, you know, we have to map every object of the uh, domain category 1 to an object of C and every morphism of the uh, uh, initial ca initial s uh, domain category uh, of the functor to uh, morphism in the arrival category C. And by the virtue of the axiom of functor, uh, the identity morphism has to be mapped to the identity morphism uh, in the arrival category. So a functor from 1 to C uh, is a just an object in disguise. That is, we have an isomorphism, uh, a set isomorphism, a bijection between the objects of C and the set of functors from 1 to C. Now, how does that relate to our general problem? So let's go back to the general problem. Is We are being given two categories, C and D, and two functors, f and g, between them. And we want to define a natural transformation. What is a natural transformation between such functors? But said otherwise, we can ask ourselves how we can uh, turn this category, uh, one cat of categories and functor between them, into a two category. Let's call it one cat bar. And the fact that it's a two category, we, it allows us to to have those uh, alpha, those arrows between arrows, kind of a, a two-dimensional surface between the one-dimensional dimension, dimensional objects f and g. And we have seen that uh, objects of c are in bijection with uh, functors from 1 to c. And if we go a little bit further and we assume that uh, c as a category is equivalent to this uh, yet to be defined um, uh, one cat uh, category of morphism between uh, one and c. That is, if we give ourselves uh, what it means to to have two cells uh, when we are starting from the category one, so we assume that. Then. If we take a general uh, alpha between a general functor f and g, uh, the fact that we want to make one cat a two category means that we have to be able to give a meaning to, to this kind of diagram where we have uh, the two cell u and the two cell alpha and we should be able to compose them. Now, what does it mean to give a, a meaning to such composition? Uh, it means in particular that we have to be independent on the different way that we can give a meaning to, to such composition. So one way to compose, to give a meaning to this composition is to start with u and then apply alpha. So to start with u, we'll have this following diagram in one cat if we unfold this, this composition. So we keep f fixed and then we travel through u, so we go from fa to fb through fu. And then from fb 
which is an object of D, we will travel to uh, GB. So here we keep a B constant and we travel through alpha. And since it's going to be uh, something between uh, functors bet uh, starting from one, it, it, it will have to be some morphism in D. Now that's one way to travel, to give a meaning to this composition. And another way is to travel first through alpha and then through u. And if we travel through alpha and then through u, we keep a fixed. And then we travel from fa to ga through alpha a, something we will, which we call alpha a. And then from ga to gb, so we keep g uh, constant and we travel through, g, through u just as usual. Now we've uh, said that um, uh, the, the morphisms, the functors from 1 to d are akin to uh, objects of d and uh, the, the morphism between, so the two cells between functors from 1 are um, uh, morphisms of d. So the left diagram and the right diagram have a translation in, uh, in d. And here is the translation. Now, the, if we require both uh, diagram in one cat to be equal, uh, we require the, their translation in, in D to be equal. That is, the square has to commute. And then we get back the original uh, uh, detailed definition of what is a natural transformation. There is a family of morphism in D indexed by the object uh, one for each object of C, such that for any morphism U in C, uh, the corresponding square commutes. So that's one way to get the traditional definition of the natural transformation, and it, which arises solely from the fact that we want to have those two cells, and we know that uh, functors from one to C. Uh, is a, are a category which is equivalent as a category to the category C. N not equ not uh, equivalent as a set. We, we're not just talking about the object of C, we're talking about the object and the morphisms, which will be translated translated to a functor from one and a morphism between functors, that is a natural transformation. So this as much has been given. Uh, the commutation property arise from the fact that we want to be able to compose uh, such two cells like u and alpha. Now another way to travel where we will start with u and apply alpha in both case we can either start from a and then post compose add the bits that are missing or we can start from b and then um, prepend the bits that are missing. Let's see how it works. We can start from a, a, a generic U. So this diagram is in set and it has a mistake. Anyway, I will explain. So this diagram is in set. So we identify U as a, an object uh, in the set CAB and uh, to to uh, travel from 1 to u is the same as traveling from 1 to the identity of a and then uh, post composing by u. Now once we have post composed by u, once we are in cab, we can apply f and once we apply f we end up in, in d, f, a, f, b and not c, f, a, n, b as written. And the fact that it's a functor means that the, the square in the middle commutes. And then once we are in d, f, a, f, b, we can post compose by alpha b and end up in d f a g b and not c f a g b like written. So that's the post composition. We see that we start from 1a, we post compose f u and then we post compose alpha b. But if we start from u, we can also see uh, u as starting from the identity of b and pre composing by u, which is uh, after traveling through G is the same as pre-composing the identity of GB uh, by GU and then we can also pre-compose uh, this composite morphism by, by alpha A. And so those two ways, starting from A and uh, post-composing uh, 
morphism or starting from B and prepending morphisms, we require it to be equal. So this gives us the same condition uh, for natural transformation. Now, given all this, we have defined one cat as a two category of uh, one categories as objects, one functors as morphism, and natural transformation. So one categories are categories and one functor are functors. Uh, and we can we are entitled to have this kind of pictorial reasoning and uh, we are able to draw uh, not only a morphism between the category C and D but also th this two morphism or 2D surface alpha which is characteristic of a two category. And again, all these definitions, the traditional definition of uh, what a natural transformation is, arise solely from the fact that we want, as in any two category, we want to be able to compose two cells. And if our ambition is to, to give uh, a meaning of those two cells, uh, this is a natural condition that uh, follows from this composition in, uh, in, in a two category.